Yo, 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 welcome everybody. Good evening everyone, welcome back to TCR Trinity. Competitive racing. Well, TCR TJ is the Season 13 Golden Class Champion for Trinity Competitive Racing. Oh, let's go, dude! Yes! Jabbar on the podium! He's on it by a tenth! Gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, not... side by side through one. And side, oh, and see freeze gets a little half spin. Let's fucking go! <laughs> Wheel bumping. DRS Naval, let's do it. And Captain Blade battling it out for position. Captain Blade. Echo, what the f? The McChicken goes around and he also makes a yeah, rewind down the front straight. Oh my god. <laughs> I gotta check the hard rate. Why do we do this? Because of nights like this. Yo yo, welcome everybody to TCR Trinity Competitive Racing and welcome back to the Racing Debrief TCR's podcast where we combine the world of e-racing, sim racing, and TCR with real life motorsports and Formula One, a true racing enthusiast. Listen, um, we are back with another podcast. I don't even know what episode we're on. We're recording on July 31st. Well, I guess you can say at 12.36 a.m. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, let's get into it. We have the um, preseason for season 16, so we thought this would be a good episode to bring back uh, for the podcast and hopefully uh, upload them a little bit more regularly now that the TCR season has started and, um, you know, we're in the summer months of some motorsports of all the topics will be coming up. Um so yeah, it feels good to be back and with the podcast, and in just a few days, we will have some new races on the new game, in the new season, with some new drivers, new tracks, lots of new, uh, it's refreshing, I don't know if I'm quite ready for it, um, to do the commentary on Tuesday, I'll have to, I guess this will be a little test to see if I still got it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to be back. Uh, lots of new faces, lots of returning drivers. Uh, so if you're listening still at this point, um, yeah, make sure to follow Teacher on all socials. And uh, if you're new and you're not on the Discord, uh, join that. And um, yeah, we'll get into it. So welcome, Camden. Welcome, welcome back. Well, first of all, before I introduce myself, it is episode oh. 28. I just looked it up. Episode oh, okay. 28. So we're getting up there. We've had a lot of episodes, but yeah, no, it's good to be back. It's been a little bit since our last episode, and it's a good time to do it. Is we're just a couple of days from the start of the season. This is, this will, oh, well, you know what? So this, I think, is the first podcast since you were uh, claimed champion in, in the Silver Class. I don't know if we did a podcast with you as champion. Uh, since then, but you, we are talking with the newly crowned season 15 silver class champion. So uh, add that to the resume for Camden Luca. Yes, and uh, thank you, and I appreciate you personally delivering the trophy to me too. Yes. Um, I do have that now uh, up on a shelf, front and center, for me to always see as inspiration before. Uh, my golden class races that I'm now a part of on Wednesday nights. Yeah. How, how, before we get into this, how, how do you think, because um, I've usually always raced on the same day with uh, Platinum or previously known as a Thursday class, is what we just called it back then. Um, I only switched days once. I went, because TCR used to race on Saturdays, and then after the Saturdays that we originally started on, we moved to Thursdays, which was now, you know, we, what is known as the the platinum class division but how are you adjusting to racing league racing on a different day even though it's just one day uh you know more into the week i like it uh tomorrow is actually kind of the start of um the season for me because i remember last season for silver i got on and practiced on monday and then tuesday before the race as well you know, I, I would never practice on the weekend. So tomorrow really is the start for me to where I get to practice Monday, Tuesday, and now Wednesday. Um, and I've talked with you before on how the Platinum and Golden guys 
they kind of like the fact that they get to race later in the week because it almost gives them that structure to be like, all right, I'm going to start practicing on Monday and then we'll lead it up to race day. So um, it, it's a little bit different. It, it's nice just knowing that I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish in the silver class and I don't have to look back on those Tuesday nights being like, oh, man, you know, I spent four seasons there and never got a championship. But, um, yeah, no, I've, I've got another goal now to uh, go for a golden class championship. But hate to say it, Seafreeze, uh, this is going to be a little secret. Oh. I don't think I'm winning it this season. Oh, <laughs> just going to put it wah, out wah. There. <laughs> <laughs> The crowd goes, oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen! I am not the favorite this season. Well, you, you've you've changed to the wheels, so that's a new uh, update um, for you. Used with the Fantech wheel, and uh, that's going to be a big difference from you know pad to the wheel. And not only that, but you took off ABS, and you're also moved up a class, which has more experienced drivers and you know tougher grid all around. So, yeah, quite the jump for sure. It'll be it'll be interesting not seeing you on the grid every uh, Tuesday um, I have a lot of new faces to commentate on uh, for the silver class but um, yeah a lot, lot, lots of lots of things and I'm sure other drivers um, also have either changed classes or they've changed equipment changed assists so you really never know what you're gonna get out of a driver until you go through, I would say, of quite a few races. I would say by like round five is usually when you'll, you know, a couple races in, you'll you'll start to get an idea of what the grid will look like, because uh, sometimes it does take, you know, some time for some drivers to adapt and to improve. And once they improve and they find it, they really start to unlock all that uh, lap time. And some people might have gotten the game, you know, a lot later as well. So, you know, because it's a new game, not everyone was playing with the premium membership uh, <laughs> three days earlier. So, the new game sometimes could mix some things up, and that's what we're here to talk about today. So, I guess we'll start with the Silver Class. I'm going to intro um, a little bit of the roster here, and then we'll uh, talk a little bit about it. As far as um, the Silver Class goes, it's our mixed assist uh, tier. Uh, so we have you can have the ability to use medium traction, full traction, uh, no, no, medium traction, no traction. Uh, you can use ABS, manual gears are required, and you could use the racing line. Uh, and it's usually more tender to those who are newer to league racing, uh, those that don't have that much experience under the belt. There's some seats still available, I think. To be exact, there's still five seats. Uh, more applications are coming in, so if you're listening to this, you can definitely join and sign up and maybe get on the grid before we start for round number one at Qatar, uh, August 1st, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. All right, so for the grid, um, here we go. Uh, Alfa Romeo, nobody. We don't have anybody in Alfa Romeo's. Oh, man. Shabar and Camden, you left ship. And the team has went bankrupt. They couldn't hire anybody. <laughs> hey, they retired the whole team in honor of us, Seafreeze. Oh yeah, it w it was it was truly an era, one of a kind, magical. <laughs> uh, we'll move on to the Alpines of Easy uh, Ten, who did a few of debut races last season. Towards the end, I think he got a few races under his belt. Uh, we also have Z Nars who I think did a few races at some point in TCR, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I, I think early on in Season 15, possibly. Yeah, uh, only quite a few, so we didn't really get a full picture of him, but he is back with the L in, in the Alpine. Uh, for Alpha Tower, we have a new driver of uh, Bulldog Bazaar, and returning driver, we are checking. Aston Martin team of the big Toblerone. He moved ship. He's now at Aston Martin, returning driver. He uh, did not win a race last season, but he did uh, get some multiple podiums, I do believe. He was uh, had a lot of signs of speed. 
uh, but had a couple spins to go along with him. But I think uh, with this being his second season, I think he'll do a lot better. He's teaming up with the returning driver of Oreo Huff African, who was at Aston Martin last season. Ferrari team is returning drivers of Halberg and Bags. Um, Haas is empty. McLaren is new driver of Whizbang. Uh, Mercedes has two new drivers of Kyle Eight Fan and Peaky Blinder. Red Bull uh, has some familiar faces, um, and it might be uh, under the Freeze Foundation. I'll be supporting uh, Red Bull in uh, this campaign of Chabar and F1 Nerd. So, Chabar has joined F1 Nerd at Red Bull, where we've seen F1 Nerd a lot. And to finish it up, oh, another familiar face, maybe even uh, <laughs> some young blood in there, some blood relations uh, in Williams. We have Kluka and a new driver, or Bolton drivers, and also Pilot Pants teaming up in the Williams. Uh, Kluka, that sounds very similar to Camden Luka. I, I wonder. I wonder what that'll uh, represent. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, just for clarification, that is my brother. And I want to flash back to season 15. I think it's really ironic. Season 15, we had a father-son combination of JMB and El Capitan. Now, I know I'm not going to be in the silver class next season, but now we have, you know, two brothers in the same league, so... This is a family affair here in TCR, I can promise you that. <laughs> well, we better get some females in here, because we got to <laughs> We got to reproduce somehow and get some more drivers, fill these whoa, grids up. Whoa. Is that whoa, too far? Whoa. Hey, we got to make sure people are listening. <laughs> do, do we have a TCR OnlyFans? Oh, I don't know. That, uh, that's not... We'll, we'll leave that for another <laughs> day. <laughs> Man, that took a turn. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, anywho, um, silver class, yeah. Um, there's um, it's interesting because, like I said, there's a lot of new drivers. Um, you know, uh, Bull Bulldog Bazaar's one, uh, Whizbang, Kyle, Peaky, Kluka, Pilot, Pants. So there's six right there. Easy and Z Nars are relatively still new. Uh, you know, they only have a few races under their belt. And uh, there's some openings as well. So if anyone else joins the grid, you know, we could be looking at around 10 to 11 new drivers, which we don't even have a track record of. So it's very hard to predict where they'll be. I will say that. Um, I will say that um, the two drivers that looked impressive from either open lobbies or you know times that I've seen just circling around is actually your brother <laughs> Camden uh, so Kluka I would put and also I guess his teammate the Williams pairing looks really strong of, of pilot pants as well they both look pretty strong um, and I would say that the favorite I don't know if they're really hmm it's very hard to go with somebody and I've, I say this a lot of times the champion or the favorite might not even be on the grid at the moment it could be someone who does <laughs> round two or round three and 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 we've seen that at other points in time so yeah I think the biggest the the top person I think it's f1 nerd or is it Toblerone? I think Toblerone might have had it. I think he. Do you think so? Who's well? Who was the so finished highest? It was um, F1 so it, in fifth, and then Chabar in sixth last season. Halberg yeah. was seventh. Yeah, Bags is eighth. Toblerone was tenth. Oreo was eleventh. Uh, Easy was twelfth. We were checking was thirteenth. So, uh, the team of the Red Bulls are actually the quickest if you look at the standings from last year because uh, Camden, Carson, Jane Bean, and Capitan have all moved up to the Golden Class. Yeah, I, I really think that this is the hardest class to predict by far. 
uh, it, you look at golden and platinum, which we will get to in just a second, I really think that you have favorites in both of those classes. Um, but like you said, it, this class has a handful of returning drivers. You know, we have a bunch of new drivers, but, but like you said, a lot of familiar faces and a couple of them are really consistent. I think that's something you have to look for because uh, Kluka and Pilot Pants, from what I've heard about Pilot Pants, and I've heard this from Kluka, uh, Pilot Pants is going to be good. I think he'll be a championship threat. It's just a matter of how consistent he can be because um, F1 Nerd and Chabar, I want to focus on the Red Bulls for a second. They both only had one DNF last season, and they both ran the entire season. Those, those guys finished races, and we saw it last season. We see it just about every season. You cannot crash out. Um, it is so crucial to not have DNFs, and if there's anybody that is going to win the championship on consistency, it's F1 Nerd. So, y you know, I'm actually going to pick him for the championship, Seafreeze. Oh, wow. I, I really like his consistency. I like how he finished Season 15. He was up in contention for the win at the end of that race in Belgium last season. So he finished off the last season on a high note, and... Um, you know, Kluka, I'm not sure he's as consistent as F1 Nerd. I'm not sure about Pilot Pants, but just from what I've seen, like, F1 Nerd, he, he very rarely makes big mistakes from what I've seen. Yeah, I mean, he's been in, this, in the silver class for a number of seasons, as is Trebar, and like you said, you know, I agree with everything you're saying. If you're going off of the standings from last season, F1 Nerd is the highest driver, you know, on the roster. And I think... I don't know who his teammates have been, but I think the teammate pairing of Chabar and F1 Nerd, I think if they practice like you guys have been, you know, the last two seasons when you were teammates with each other and you do the preparation for each week, I think that'll help and propel him even more. Um, I also see some big signs of improvement from Toblerone as well. Um, now that... Uh, la last season was pretty much dominated by th the three drivers that won the races, which was yourself, uh, Carson, and Jane B. And you guys just took all the wins away. <laughs> now that you three are up in the you know the golden class, uh, even Capitan with some nice performances and podiums, top fives. I think that'll allow Toblerone to relax a little bit and maybe uh, take some pressure off him and I could see him having a big improvement um, as well because I think he's quicker I think he's probably the quickest driver of returning drivers he's just not really his, yeah I think his quality has been great um, he's usually he was really quick with even like Carson Carson Toblerone that pairing at the Alpha Tauri's last season, they were pretty strong. The thing that hurt Toblerone was his spins early on. He would spin in the first five laps. His tires would get overheated, then he'd keep spinning, and he would just lose all the time. Um, so, do I expect some spins? Unfortunately, I do still expect spins. Um, this game, although, is better on traction, so maybe he'll... If he could find a way to stop spinning, especially early on on heavy fuel modes, I think that'll set him up pretty nice for the race. And his speed's been pretty good. Um, I feel like he was just always playing from behind the eight ball. He was always going up the hill, so to speak. And if he could just focus on the beginning of the races with all the pressure kind of alleviated off of him, I think he could have a good season. Because I think he is the quickest. Then it would be probably F1 Nerd. But I think if you talk about consistency, yeah, I think F1 Nerd has been... would be the most consistent here. And I don't think it's even close. Um, so, yeah. Although, as far as the championship goes, I... I like... Out of the like, I, I kind of have to give two predictions here, <laughs> okay. um, because if we're talking about the drivers that are returning that we have a track record on, I would also agree with you. I think F1 Nerd would be my favorite. Uh, Toblerone, like I said, he's uh, still in the conversation, but I would still give the nod to F1 Nerd. But as far as a champion. 
I don't know. Is F1 Nerd the the best driver in the Silver Class right now? Could be. Uh, will he be the, the the champion at the end of it? I don't know. Fifteen rounds is a long time. You know, it's about four months. I have an eye on the Williams drivers. I do like Pilot Pants, and I, I like the pairing of the constructors. So I would probably, out of the new drivers, pick Pilot Pants. Um, you know, and then others we don't know. They might be upsets as well, you know. I think we'll have to kind of revisit this a few races in and see if there were any new faces that's joined. And, you know, once we get a few races uh, in the books, we'll see, you know, who was delivering. Because I, I have no idea, you know, I have no reason to pick uh, Bulldog Bazaar because I, I've never seen him race, so I don't know how good he is. <laughs> so there's just a lot of unknowns uh, from this grid. Um, right. So, well, yeah. you know, there is one driver that we have not mentioned yet that is probably just as consistent as F1 Nerd, and that's Hallberg. Hallberg actually had zero DNFs last season. Although he missed a race, you know, he didn't show up for a race, Hallberg didn't crash out of any races, and... If I look at the stats, he finished on the points in every single race. Yeah. So Hallberg, you know, just from what I saw last season, his pace isn't as good as F1 nerds, and maybe that's changed throughout the offseason, but Hallberg is going to do some damage. He's going to finish on the podium. He could sneak out a win, you know, maybe throughout the season, but he's going to be up there as well. He could definitely compete... Um, inside the top five in points, maybe even the top three. Yeah, and he was only one point behind Shabar as well from Halber uh, Halberg was. Uh, Bags too, a nice teammate there. He, he always has these interesting races where he'll be nowhere at the beginning and then all of a sudden he'll <laughs> be he'll do a, a, either a strategy call or he'll he'll get lucky with the rain or something and then he's in a podium position. <laughs> so yep. I don't know. He might be a breakout star this season. Um, and even Oreo as well. I mean, the, 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 the drivers that are returning, if anything, they have the more of the advantage because they, they obviously know how the other drivers race and they know who moved up. So they kind of get a sense of how the grid is and all they have to do is really focus on the new drivers and you know what what are they going to bring to the table and and kind of adjust off of that so you know these first few weeks are going to be crucial and i know we're going to qatar a new track as well um so that's going to mix it up because it's going to take a few races to go to a few different circuits to really get a full understanding of it all and since we're going to a new track for the first round uh, you could pretty much just throw that out into the wild card <laughs> because it's so new. None of the drivers have enough running time. Even if they put practice in, you know, if we ever revisit Qatar, let's say in season 17, the times that we'll be doing are going to be so much quicker than what we set here this week. So the improvement throughout the game will be a lot, a lot of time. Um, so, yeah. Very interested. Uh, another silver class. Hopefully, we do. We get a, a couple more signups. Uh, tennis looks, uh, you know, probably be a lot better overall this season than uh, towards the end of last season. I know the game had a lot to do with that, but new game, fresh start, and uh, yeah, we have a few open seats, so you can sign up. Uh, go to the website trainingcompetitiveracing.com, fill out an application, join our Discord, and uh, get your time trial evaluation in and we get you on the grid uh, for Tuesday any final thoughts Camden for silver um no I mean like I said it's it's gonna be extremely unpredictable uh, because we really don't uh, have a clue as to who the front runner is gonna be we know we're gonna have a lot of uh, consistent guys a lot of fast guys but there, there's nobody that really stands out as like top of the mountain at this point very well said. All right, we'll move on to the Golden Class. Golden Class runs Wednesdays, 
8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, it is racing line only for the assist, so you have to use manual gears, no traction, no ABS. And uh, the Golden class has always been an interesting, fun class. Very competitive as well. Well, the last season, SPM <laughs> and Main Wayne were the real two uh, big culprits last season. They kind of threw away a nice uh, golden class usually goes to the finale with uh, the championship last season it was uh, many races from the <laughs> finale because uh, SPM uh, won it in such good fashion um, uh, but we have a nice mixture of uh, veteran drivers some champions on the grid some uh, silver drivers getting promoted and I believe we only have one seat open and that is at Alpha Tari so if you're listening, you could still sign up or get on the reserve list and um, get on the grid. So we'll go through the roster here. We'll start in order of however this was sent out. Uh, we'll start with Red Bull, which is the father-son pairing and your season 15 silver class constructor champions of JNB and El Capitan. So they both moved up. They're in Red Bull this time. That will be a fun, uh, fun team to look at. Both coming from the silver, uh, silver class. We then move to Ferrari. Longtime Golden Class veteran of you having a giggle will be at Ferrari this year with the new driver of Whisper making his debut. Uh, Mercedes drivers will be Raiden Shogun, who will be, I guess, the top Golden driver. He finished P3 last season. P1 and P2, um, the champion is in racing next season, and P2 was Main Wayne, he'll be in Platinum. So Raiden will have the, uh, he'll be looking down at everybody, I guess you can say. He'll be teamed up with Rafa Hulk, who is your season 14 Silver Class Champion. Alpine is a fun lineup, a GTR Lion, long time TCR veteran, uh, he was runner-up two seasons ago uh, he did get the nod to run in golden this year and uh, I, I know he'll be uh, looking for that championship finally after losing it uh, for one point um, although a lot of disconnects and uh, other things kind of prohibited from getting that um, but uh, he'll be at Alpine with uh, a new friend, a new buddy of his uh, that he found. He'll be making his debut, which is Rems. That'll be in the Alpine. Uh, McLaren are uh, dumb and dumber. We have Seegers. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say something. <laughs> Seegers, the... Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. I love you guys. Seagrass and Ben back at it again in uh, McLaren this year. Uh, so they'll be at McLaren. I was surprised that they chose McLaren. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Where were they last year? Uh, Red Bull, they were. So it might have got taken. Or I don't know. No, they, they yeah. were one of the first to choose. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Well, we'll keep going down here. Uh, the Alfa Romeos, who... Uh, used to be at Alpine for a few seasons. It's C. Rizzi and F. N. D. Cakes, the long-time pairing. They have moved ship to Alfa Romeo, and they kind of took your former car, so you had a you were forced to pick a new one. Yeah, uh, real quick. Um, as I am the Golden Class coordinator, I was the one that went out to uh, you know get people's car selections, and I went to C. Rizzi, and I'm like, "You're picking the Alpine again, right?" <laughs> and he's like, no, man, I'm taking the Alpha. I'm like, God which one? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Romeo, which unfortunately. One? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So they'll be at Alpha Romeo this year. Uh, Aston Martin is going to be your season 12 server class champion of Sir Charles, who struggled last season. Just going to put that out there. Hope for a bounce back season, Sir Charles. He'll be um, teaming up with Rockstar, returning driver who had a, a good season back in 15. Uh, so he'll be at the Aston Martin crew. Uh, and then we go to yourself, Camden Luca, season 15 silver class champion. He'll be at Haas with uh, FFR underscore Raikkonen, who 
was in platinum last year, although um, he got the nod to come down. Not that he struggled by any means, but um, he j he actually finished quite high at, in platinum last season. But that's just because he attended every race. Um, that's what I believe. Um, I think he has potential to do great in, in Platinum, but um, he's been wanting to give Golden Class a go. So um, I said, you know what? You might as well uh, this season. So he'll be at Haas alongside you, and we'll see what he could do in uh, the Golden Class. Uh, new driver at AlphaTauri, which is Daniel Morris, who needs a teammate, so go sign up. And Williams, a new driver of KD 1997, and... Uh, Carson, who got uh, runner-up last season and promoted from the silver class. Lots of options, lots of drivers, lots of history and stati uh, statistics. Um, this is a stacked lineup, I will say. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Uh, lots of storylines, as you mentioned. It's a stacked field, but there's a lot of past champions, uh, Hall of Famer, uh, do we oh wait? yeah, I forgot to say. G oh, I'm, uh, excuse me. Yeah, GTR there we go. Lion. Yeah, good, good timing. Here we go. GTR Lion is uh, he's a Hall of Famer. He is. He'll be the uh, I guess the only full time Hall of Famer driver, <laughs> um, and we'll be announcing the next ballot probably next week. So stay tuned for that and uh, for when voting uh, opens up. But yeah, GTR Lion, longtime veteran, t obviously official. Hall of Famer, uh, and he's going for that title. So he, he is a real threat, and you know, I think there's many people in this grid that can win it. But GT's always look strong, especially when when he sees the that little carrot just sticking out there, the championship, the Golden Class Championship. Yeah, it kind of pulls out the lion in him, and he just kind of, you know, practices and prepares, and you know, he's very unstoppable at that point. Um, and I think he is probably my favorite uh, for the Golden Class Championship. I'm just going to say it right now. That's a good pick. Uh, GTR Lion was arguably the quickest driver in Season 14. Uh, really, it's, 14, it's kind of... A, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. 14. Well, yeah, it's just it's a crime honestly that he didn't win the championship because he missed the first two races of the season just because he uh signed up late. Right. And then he had multiple multiple disconnections uh which obviously is not your fault. I mean, it happens at times, but the disconnections were cross play. It wasn't his fault. Yeah. Um and he still almost won the championship. Um so if he keeps up that pace, if he still retains that pace, then yeah, I mean, GT Lions should be the favorite going into the season, just based on what we saw from uh, Season 14. But, since we are applying the Silver Class favorite rules that you just put out, uh, the highest finishing driver in last season's Golden Class standings is Raiden Shogun, yeah. uh, and he has always been up front in TCR. Yeah. He, well, started he also wasn't. Class. He wasn't on the grid when when GT was racing back in season uh, fourteen when he was you know so close to the championship. And there's a lot of new faces on this grid that he he wasn't um, racing you know with. Um, so there are other threats, um, and it's going to be. I don't think it'll be a walk in the park at all. And I'm not saying he's definitely going to win it, but. Uh, I think he is a good favorite, but there's probably four to five that could win it right now, depending on a lot of variables that could, you know, dwindle down. But, um, yeah, Raiden really hasn't raced much with GT, and I think them two are probably on par with each other. Who do you think is... It, it, just from your gut instinct, and I'm asking you because a couple seasons ago, you hit the nail on the head. With the Golden Class predictions. So, right here, right now, who do you got between those two? Between those two? Oh, well, I think GT or Lion will still get it. Um, I think he's just very calculated as a driver, and um, he's very smart. He attends every race, or he will be attending every race. 
he's prepared every race he doesn't crash out a lot um, and he's quick and yeah he just does a lot of things right to be honest um, I think he has the go ahead for me um, I think you could also throw people in the conversation I really do like um, KD 1997 I've seen him from other leagues so I, even though we, it's his first race uh, this week I do think um, you know I do know a little bit about him I think he's been pretty quick as well uh, he has a good shot at this. Um, I was impressed by Whisper, a new driver, uh, with his TT times. And uh, ultimately he went with Golden because he doesn't have much league experience. So that could hurt him a little bit, but he's looked pretty good. Um, another two dri or three, I guess you can also put in the conversation, is uh, Raikkonen. Because he finished, uh, I believe he finished s n or ninth. And he got 70 points, no podiums, although he got demoted off one with penalties last season. Um, but finished ninth in the Platinum Class standings last season. So he's really strong as well. He puts a full season together. Rockstar's returning. He was quick back in season 14. Then he moved up to 15. I guess it was he got scared and he stopped showing up. And now he's back and wow. wants another shot at Golden, which I respect. You know, go ahead. So I'm I'm expecting a big season from him. That's all I'm saying. I think he has a good season. So a little bit of redemption. Um, and the other one I gotta put is um, Secrets, man. I know a lot of people, mm. you know, kind of overlook him, but they're like, oh, you got beat by Secrets. No, Secrets is good. I mean, he's he's a sim racer. Um, he's quick and. You know, when he puts on the VR, I don't know if he's using VR this year, but if he is, I think Seagrass is a good option. There's really anybody, and then you could look at the silver drivers moving up. You could look at yourself, even just, maybe not for the championship, but just having good runs, right? Uh, Carson, J&B, um, you could really look to anybody, the Alfa Romeo crew, Rizzi and F&D. You know, how many poles did F&D Cakes have last year? And he was running up front. Rizzi as well, they were running up front. And then something would go wrong. Um, could they change that narrative and, and start up front and stay up front? And, you know, then they could be a favorite. So, you could really pick anybody and, you know, put some points down and, and see. And it could go their direction. But, ultimately... That's a lot of what ifs. So, if you take away the what ifs, I think GT is still my guy uh, for the drivers' championship. Yeah, I agree. But um, you know, I think something we need to talk about is the constructors, because I think constructors is just as crazy as the drivers. I mean, really, you look at some of these teams. Uh, you have the Alfa Romeo, which, like you said, T Rizzi and F and D Cakes. Both finished respectively high in the points, and uh, C. Rizzi won the season finale at Belgium. You have the Alpine with, obviously, GTR Lion, and uh, Rems, which I think GTR Lion likes because, um, you know, he really wanted to team up with him, and that tells me he's probably got some pace, so Alpine's looking quick. And then you got Mercedes. Uh, Raiden Shogun, like we said, is going to be a favorite, but I got to talk about Rafa Hulk for a second because... Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Rafa has a really good season. Uh, as somebody who lost the championship to him in Silver Class in Season 14, uh, the season prior, Rafa Hulk didn't win a single race in Season 13 of Silver Class. And I don't know, but Season 15 Golden Class kind of gave me those same vibes to where he's going to start off slow. And then in his next season, he's going to go and, and win a handful of races. So I, I think Raiden, point. Shogun, and Rafa are going to be a force. Yeah, well, uh, that's, the, that's a really great point because Rafa Hulk, he won in season 14 in Silver Class. He moves up to season 15, and he scores 25 points. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one race win in Silver. <laughs> but he won the championship in Silver, so he's used to winning all these races, all these podiums, all these points. He goes to the Golden Class and he gets 25 points, which he's done that an entire season full. 
he did that in one race in silver. <laughs> so, I don't think he had a bad season. I think a lot of luck and some mistakes, and it was his first season in there. I do agree. I think he'll have a, a bounce back season. You know, how far advanced will he be? I don't know. Um, but that could be a little, um, I guess, what do you say, a predecessor of, uh, of what the silver drivers like yourself and J&B, Carson, Capitan, that's a little bit what you can expect from them moving up because I know some have to take the ABS off. Obviously, you're changing with the, excuse me, the wheel. Uh, so, you you might only score 25 points next season, Camden. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm I'm just trying to finish races because, you know, I've got a pretty good streak of not having a DNF since season 13. So, that's just what I'm looking for is to score as many points as I can and kind of set myself up for season 17. You know, get the experience of being on the wheel, uh, taking off that last assist, and just setting myself up for next season. I want to help out Raikkonen in this season as, uh, you know, me probably being the number two driver to him. Because um, I think Raikkonen has the ability to win a race this season. Um, I, I really wanted to team up with him because I think he'll be, he'll be pretty good uh, in Golden, but... Yeah, well, I don't think he'll just win a race. I think he'll win multiple. Well, races. yeah, I, I'm I, saying yeah. like you know, once once he wins, I just I see Raikkonen being the guy of once he breaks through, he can go off. You know, the first few races, I, I don't know if he's going to win. Um, you know, we just don't know what GTR Lion has and and, and whatever. But Raikkonen definitely, um, he has the ability to go in and be a contender for sure. I remember Raikkonen when he first joined in, and he was he was actually, I believe, in the silver class, and then we bumped him up pretty quickly. I don't know if you're going to listen to this, Raikkonen, but if you do, let me know if I'm uh, I hope he does. <laughs> well, I, uh, we'll hit the like button. <laughs> um, we kind of moved him up a lot quicker than um, maybe we didn't give him a full shot in the under uh, classes, but because he was just he was really good at the time uh, and I, th I believe he was running just racing line or no racing line and he was doing some good times and we were like oh you should be in platinum you should go up and we kind of moved him up there number one because he belonged I mean if you finish in the top 10 in the points I mean that you put a nice season together um, regardless of what season it is um, but he really never had an opportunity to be in golden to, to show what he can do leading laps, leading races, winning races, getting podiums. We've never seen him truly get a podium in TCR, in Platinum. Uh, I, I, he's, I don't know if he's ever won a race in his stats from lower, um, but he's an interesting person, because like you said, I think once he gets his first win, and if it comes earlier, he's going to have a really good season. I think he could contend with GT and Raiden, and he should. I think it'll be kind of... Um, upsetting and maybe embarrassing if he doesn't because he came from platinum and he was a pretty you know he's a solid driver in platinum uh probably a midfielder uh, i think that's appropriate to say and it's not a diss that's a good uh, it's good to be up there um better than a back marker i guess you could say and to not get demoted because not that he do, you know doesn't belong in platinum he'd still belong he could belong in platinum but we're giving this opportunity to him so I feel like he does have to perform he does have to get some wins and he has to be in the conversation I think he'll absolutely take that opportunity um, so yeah that's really good for him um, did you actually put in a, a constructor winner I did who was that I have Mercedes. You have Mercedes. Okay, so you're officially, yep. you're officially going with Raiden and, and Rafa. Um, I, if I'm going off the basis of GT having a great season, um, Rems, I'm not too sure. I did do some racing with him, and I like his racecraft. I like his speed, and I like, um, I like a lot of things about him. I just don't know 
you know, is he going to show up every race? Is he going to be prepared? Will he have any mistakes? Like, I don't know how much league racing he has um, experience-wise. So even the simple things you could make mistakes in, especially on this grid, you know, everyone's bound to get, make a mistake at some point. I think for the constructors, though, it's really a big question mark with Rems. What does a new driver deliver? And, and a big question mark with Raph Hulk as well, like you were saying. How much can he improve? Um, but I think if you go as a pairing, I think the Alfa Romeo crew of C. Rizzi and FND Cakes, they're probably going to be my pick because now that SPM and Main Wayne are off and, and better adventures in the future, um, and they're not winning all the damn races. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll again. I think that'll help these two guys um, get more podiums, get more wins. I think together um, they could have enough points um, together to win the constructors. I think Raiden and GT they might be lacking still just a little bit from their other drivers. Um, but if they do win the constructors, that means Rafa delivered or Rems delivered. Um, and then that would prevail them to get it. But my official prediction would be Alfa Romeo for the constructors. Yeah, I mean, I was back and forth on Alfa Romeo and Mercedes, but uh, and of course, I, I would love for Alfa Romeo to to get it. Uh, you know, our fellow uh, foundation drivers there in the Alfa Romeo, but uh, we know what Raiden can do, and we know what Rafa can do. Uh, Rafa is a former champion in the league, and Raiden is technically the favorite going into the season so i think it's just i think it's fair for me to pick mercedes and i hope alfa romeo can prove me wrong <laughs> yeah and the last final point i want to say on the golden class is the one thing i'm most interested there's probably two i guess number one i just want to see well obviously i want to see how you do with the wheel and moving up to see where you get placed um but my number one like circle that I'm circling to see, like, I want to see how this goes throughout the season, is J&B. I mm. think he is going to have a, either, a, like, a great season. I think he's been playing the game. I think he's ready. I think he, um, you know, he's doing the racing line only. He's up into the different class. He's ready for this um, challenge. And... I think he's just going to make some noise. I think he's going to have a good season. Uh, we'll see where he finishes and, and such, but I don't see him just struggling in the back. I think he's going to have some strong races. He'll make mistakes, possibly. He might have some wrecks. His consistency might not be there, because this grid is a big jump up from last season. You know, He was really only racing you and Carson last year. This year, he's racing everyone. Literally everyone. Um, but I think he's going to make some noise. So that's the one I'm circling uh, just a little bit. But um, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I, I think JMB um, will start off a little slow. Uh, just from what I noticed last season, I'm not 100% sure as to what his settings were last season, but I'm pretty sure he was starting off with something new, whether it was taking off an assist or maybe going to the wheel. Um I could tell he progressed throughout the season, in season 15, just because he was uh, learning something new and it took him a little bit. But I think he's going to not be slow, but he'll progress. You know, Towards the end of the season, he'll be competing up towards the front, but um, he might be in my shoes, maybe a little bit better, uh, to where he's not competing for podiums at the start. You know, He'll be maybe in the midfield, and as time goes on, uh, we know what JMB can do, so... Uh, he'll be up there competing for wins. Uh, it's just a matter of time. Nice. So that's the Golden Class. That'll be our first race at Qatar this Wednesday, August 2nd, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. We'll be live on both the YouTube and Twitch. So uh, come tune in and uh, watch our first round. Move on now to the Platinum Class. Um, our top division here in TCR racing line only the best of the best in TCR uh, racing line only uh, although uh, quite a few run no line as well and I'll go through the roster 
starting with your last season's champion and multi-champion <laughs> in the Mercedes this year. It is none other than four-time Platinum Class Champion B-Tom. He's your season 11, 13, 14, and 15. He's won the last three uh, championships. Uh, he will be in the Mercedes and, um, I guess you could say, the favorite. Again, <laughs> somebody's got to dethrone him and stop the streak of three in a row. Uh, we'll see if anyone could do it. He'll be teaming up with TJ once again. They won the Constructors a few seasons ago. They did not win it last season, though. Uh, we'll go move on to Red Bull, which is runner-up of a professional. And his teammate, Silent, who is... Uh, he won the T-Shirt Grand Prix last year. So that's a good for him. He'll be a Red Bull. McLaren. We have Bats Plus is your uh, Season 12 Golden Champion. Oh, I forgot to say TJ. I'm sorry, I didn't announce it. Season 13 Golden Class Champion. He's with uh, B. Tom at Mercedes. Back to McLaren. Bats Plus, Season 12 Golden Class Champion. Teaming up with Season 5 Platinum Class Champion. And he made his return 10 seasons later last year. And he won in his return, which is Odom's. Or uh, what's his... Um I think it's the Confessor is his uh, PSN. So he'll be at McLaren. Uh, Ferrari, and now we move to uh, Mebe. And the main Wayne, who is a uh, runner-up last year in Golden Class, got moved up. And uh, these two work together uh, quite nicely. I, I like this pairing here at Ferrari. Williams, we have our Season 8 Golden Champion of Andy Wu. And making his, I guess, debut in TCR of uh, Bama. He'll be at the Williams. Alfa Romeo is a nice long pairing of drivers. Got any weeb, your season 14 Golden Class Champion, alongside veteran of Fire Up Flow. They uh, finally get a chance to both be in the last season. They kind of split some time away. Uh, they were kind of you know, looking out with the new teammates, new pairings, but ultimately they got back together. They're at Alfa Romeo this year. Uh, Alpine now is Chargers, a Season 8 Silver Champion, alongside Stanley. Moved to Aston Martin, replacing myself, I guess you can say, and my seat is uh, none other than Season 10 Golden Class Champion of the Flying Jippo alongside my former teammate, uh, D'Angelo, who I will hopefully be commentating a lot more, and we'll see a lot more of him. Uh, he'll be back at Aston Martin. That's the foundation, boys. Alpha Tari is Forzan and Saucy Demon, or Captain Blade, formerly known as. And the Haas. New driver making his debut, and apparently he's some sort of a champion in another F1 league. Uh, he's bringing that experience to the Haas, which is the Gronk, as well as returning driver. Uh, he did not race last season, uh, but none other than uh, uh, just Jose, multi race winner in Golden, uh, got a few wins in Platinum a few seasons ago. I think that was season 13. And he's making a return. It's just Jose and the Haas. We have a full grid. Uh, you can still sign up and join the reserve waiting list. And uh, you could always race if we have some uh, seats open. Uh, but looking at this grid, all the accolades, I think there's only like five people that don't have a championship to their name. <laughs> Maybe six. It's absolutely stacked with silver champs, gold champs, platinum champions. Um, there's only two platinum champions on this grid. It, it's stacked. It really, really is stacked. A good lineup, very competitive. Um, you're in for a treat on the commentary, Camden. That's all I'm going to say. I am. I am super excited. I didn't think it could get better than last season based on the entertainment that we saw, but 
boy, oh boy, we're going to be cooking things up for season 16 of the Platinum class. Um, I mean, this is how it should be, though, right? Like, you should have all these champions in the top class. All the people that have worked their way from silver up yes. to gold and up to platinum. And you said it, only two platinum champions. Well, one of them has won the last three in a row, so that's probably why. Um, and is this the season that Beat Tom gets dethroned? Um, I don't know. This is a stacked grid, but I'm not seeing any way that B Tom gets dethroned. I'm just going to put it out there. Maybe you have a different perspective than me, C Freeze, but that's just the vibe that I'm getting for this season. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you win three in a row, especially in Platinum, I mean, I don't know. B Tom's just always been good at really everything, but, uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to put it. <laughs> but what he's really good at is just putting a season together. Like, he doesn't, you know, some races aren't his best. Sometimes he has, you know, an off race or whatever you have. And you know, he just comes back next week and, he, you know, he does it again. Last year was actually pretty unique. He won the championship. He only won a race. He won one mm -hmm. race last season. He pulled a Matt Kenseth. He won one race, and that was pretty early in the season i don't remember where his win came he 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 won a lot of races but they got taken away in some some way or the other um but that just proves how consistent he is you know he shows up every race and he's podiuming every race or almost i, I don't know if he got i think there was a few towards the end he didn't get on the podium uh but i think through like nine or so races he was always on the podium and even though he wasn't winning he was still scoring big time points if he's getting 15 or 18 uh you know on the podium so that is his strong suit consistency uh and then also consistently running up front which you know produces race wins so last year i know he only had one but he didn't really need more wins to get the, the championship you know the consistency in the podiums was enough because platinum has a lot of good talent and you you'll see a race where med could win a race silent will win a race professional will win a race bats could win a race odoms will win a race uh tj could win a race um i think bama just jose will come up and you know win a race or they have the capabilities of it you know what about main wayne what will he do in platinum now um, Forzan, you know, he, him too, he won, uh, I remember it was the 100% race at Miami at season 14, I think it was. So, because so many different people are winning, the consistency of s consistently scoring, I mean, how, take a, take a hit every time I say consistent, because it's just so true. If if you're running up front and, and you're getting podiums every week and then every every week a new winner is winning, that's a good thing if you're B Tom. Because you're still getting podium points and you, you know, you might have a somebody who wins the race but he's like so far back in the championship. And that was the case last season. If 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 professional had more wins or um, Odom's, you know, he didn't do the whole season but or silent, I guess you could say. Then it would have been more of a factor because the same two or three people were winning, and that's how we saw in silver and golden last year. But last year in platinum, a lot of people won races. I won a race. Uh, Bats, uh, I don't think Bats won a race. Did he win a race? I don't think so. He should have no. won a race. Flip flop won a race. Professional, <laughs> silent. You know, there's so many Odoms. You know, so many people won races, and that's what takes points away. So. You know, coming into this season, you need to have somebody who's not only as consistent as B. Tom, but somebody who's going to show every week and get multiple race wins over this competitive grid. And we saw last season, Professional was close. 
He had three wins, three in a row at that. But he had some off races. Um, and a couple more podiums, you know, it could have been more in the conversation. He, he lost it towards the end. And now, to me, and my thinking, was a down season for Beton. I don't think he's going to have one win next year. I think he'll have many wins next season, and he's going to be a threat. So I think Professional missed his opportunity. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think Professional's still going to be strong. But if he couldn't do it last season when Beatum only won one race, then either he's not going to do it this season or he's going to need, you know, five, six wins. You know, because he wasn't as consistent as Beatum last season, even though he had more wins. But I think Beatum will have a lot more wins. So that's, that's the aspect we're talking about. And out of everybody on this grid, there's only one guy that I think can win and beat beat Tom this season and that's Odom's or the Confessor. Mm -hmm. You know, I raced with him back you know, in season five he won the super class championship. So that class was run on Saturdays and it was you could run any assist you want. Odom's he didn't use many. I mean he's a controller a driver. And back then that class was the super class because uh, the intent was to bring in as many quick drivers as possible, regardless of the assist, the quickest people we knew on the game, and, and bring them in, and, and it was a quick a quick lineup. And um, the Confessor, or Odoms, he was on the grid, he, he, you know, he was running with some really quick people at the time, and he was just always quick, uh, especially on a controller and with this game being good on the controller I could see him doing really well and I, I could see him doing a full season and if he shows up every race which I know he probably will I think he'll be competing for race wins and he did he have more race wins yeah then B Tom yeah he had three yeah yes yes so you know, he, the Confessor had three wins in a short period of time. The Beatum had the whole season. So, you know, put a whole season together. Now the Confessor, I think, is a strong favorite. And I think, you know, if anyone's going to really beat Beatum, it, it's going to be him. Um, on this grid, it's going to be him. Um, because, you know, B. Tom's first season was season 10. That was his rookie season. He finished, I believe he finished fourth. Um, season 11, he won the championship. Season 12, he didn't race full-time, but that was uh, Passassin. I think Passassin, when he was racing, or Drake Dempsey now, that is what he's uh, known as, I think he would have beat B. Tom regardless, but we never really saw that because they weren't both full-time uh, at the same time. Uh, and then when uh, Drake Dempsey left to go on to uh, PC and we didn't have crossplay at the time, we uh, had B-Time, you know, win from season 13, 14, 15. And while there were close championships and close races, there just really hasn't been anyone up there consistently enough and, and want it as much as he does because he's very competitive. Um, but I think if anyone's going to do it, I think it's going to be Odom's. Um, and I just don't know who... <laughs> I don't know who to pick, though, Camden. <laughs> That's the rough part. But... Yeah. I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to say Odom's gets it. You know? I, I think he gets it this season. You know, I, I've raced with him a long time. I, I've raced with him more in my earlier days... And I've seen a lot of him, and he's done a lot of league racing. And he's also quite competitive. And... Yeah, I, I think I think he'll... I think he could do it. I think he could do it. And not only that, I think I'm going to just give it right now, the, as far as constructors as well. McLaren are going to absolutely grab that, I believe, with McLaren. Uh, Bats and Odoms. Bats was struggling last season. I think he's 
got the time now and uh, that pairing I think will beat out Mercedes the only other pairing that will come about will be last season's champions of uh, professional and silent who were at Ferrari now they're at Red Bull um, I think if they continue to be teammates they'll be at every team uh, on the grid at some point or another because every year they keep switching teams <laughs> um, but I think they'll be strong as well because professionals gonna win some races silent will win some races they both score points and podiums it's just I think Odoms will have a big gap and I think bats will support him enough so yeah I'm gonna go double double for McLaren interesting and you know that's not a bad pick like if Odoms wins the driver's championship, I would not be surprised at all. Um, it's just based on what we saw last season, B Tom was as consistent as he gets. Uh, the only DNF he had the whole season was the season finale, and it's because he and Odoms got together. And if my memory serves me correct, I think it was Odoms who drifted over into B Tom and, and caused the crash. So. Um, yeah, if you look at raw pace, um, f from what I saw in Season 15, I, I do think Odoms was faster. But uh, we saw it. You have to be consistent. You could be the fastest guy on the grid, but if, if you DNF, even multiple times, all it takes is two DNFs, and you can lose the championship. So that's why I have B-Tom going uh, four in a row uh, for his fifth championship in TCR. Um, you know what? Part of the reason, too, Seafreeze, I think he's overdue for wins. Like you said, he yeah. got a lot of wins taken away last season, which some of them were his fault. Um, but B-Tom came second so many times. And I am a little superstitious in the regard of if you come second that many times, Seafreeze, he's going to get some wins back. B-Tom could win six-plus races this season and with how consistent he is that's all he needs to do to win the championship yeah i mean i i really think it's going to be i think odoms and b tom they'll be getting a lot of a lot of the wins and the others will pick up a few here and there and it'll all all depend on who has more wins and more podiums so it's gonna it's gonna come down t to the wire because you know, you look at those who can win races and can attend. You also have to attend races. That's why, you know, I really can't pick Meb or uh, Silent or even TJ because I, I, I feel like they miss maybe even one last season. That's too many. You can't miss a race for, to be the champion. You got to be there every race. And Odom's professional and B-Tom will be there every race or will try their best to be there every race. Um, Meb, Silent, TJ, um, and maybe some others are, are quite, like Forzan, uh, you know, quite good, but, uh, even if you miss one or two races, it's too many to miss, uh, to, you know, if you want to beat B-Tom this season, if anyone does, and you're listening, you have to show to every single race, and you cannot DNF. That's how you win it. <laughs> and um, you need to be on the podium almost every single race maybe you could have I would say one or two times where y you probably would want to finish in the top five if that um, other than that you you want to grab quite a few you know a couple wins and and a lots of podiums and you know who's gonna do that be Tom Odom's professional, Silent will be in the conversation as 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 are others, but I mean we're talking about somebody who won three of you know the last three. You know professional's been on the grid for the last three, Silent's been on the grid for the last three, TJ I've been on the grid for the last three or two three yeah I've been there, uh, Bats has been there, Meb's been there, we couldn't do it. So why isn't it any different this season? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's why I picked B-Tom, yeah. you know? I've, I picked 
Look, I well, the only difference Pico though last season, and it came back to bite me. So that's just the way I'm going about it. Yeah, but the only difference is Odom's. Mm -hmm. That's the only big difference. He won more races than Beto last year. Last season, he is a platinum champion. Pro professional did too, though. L Lawrence did. Yeah, but think Silent a, won more races. Yeah, than but Beto. you gotta be consistent. But I'm saying in a short time. So now picture that many wins in that short amount of time now give him a full season you know we know what pro, you know professional had more wins but we already got, we we know what he did in a full season he lost he didn't have as many points at the end of the day because he dnf right it's, but, it's gonna come out dnf it Odoms, really is. we've never we didn't see a full season yet you know we'll see it this season and if he had that many wins and that many podiums and poles and leading up front and the amount of experience, the amount of times he's been league racing for. If anyone's going to do it, it, he he has the best shot. So, it's it, it's going to be rough, but um, yeah. And, and and as far as the the constructors go, Mercedes, Red Bull, McLaren. So it's going to be B Tom, TJ, Professional Silent, Bats and Odoms. You know those are going to be strong for you know the contention. You know, there's some other good pairings out there, um, but I just don't think they'll be bringing in enough wins and enough podiums as those three. Uh, it's been kind of consistent having b mainly three teams up front and then uh, a bunch of other teams following suit. Um, I'm interested to see what Bama and the Williams can do. I know him from other leagues in in the community and he's quite quick I think he can also uh, go up there and win some races and be in the conversation I don't know what he could do for a whole season though I've never seen that uh, so that is the only real question mark for me you know what will he bring to the grid um, but um, yeah, it's it's cool to see some of these other guys in here. You know, D'Angelo was quite quick at the beginning of the season last year, and then you know he got busy. Practice went down. He didn't have the best middle to ending of the season, but towards the the start of it, it looked quite good. Um, he's with there in there with Chippo, Stanley and Chargers are returning, Godany, Fire Flow, Andy Wu. Lots of returning drivers. We'll see, you know, what they could do. Um if they could maybe snag some podiums, get closer uh, towards the front. Um I will say, you know, racing some races towards the end of last season quite a few of them had some good races I, I think it was got any wee but Canada was quite good I remember uh, towards the end of last season uh, so their race pace their ability to, to to put a race together and stick uh, you know to minimize mistakes and to stick with the main group uh, try and not to waste any time in your race uh, overall time is is crucial so I think for these drivers it's that's what their focus should be this season is to put good races together and um, be proud of it no matter what result is because you know the guys at the front they're going to do their thing they're going to win races how do you get as close to that as possible well that's you know not getting time penalties speeding in the pits spinning um, and just trying to Take on battles you need to take on, and then kind of stick and stick with that main group. See if you could stick with their DRS train, and um, you know maybe you get lucky at the end with the safety car and put some soft tires on or strategy, and you get uh, some nice results. So I think they're all capable of doing that. Um, everyone else, and um, yeah, you never know. You might have a surprise win, a couple podiums here. You know they should have some good races. So there's a lot to look forward to. You know, when you're racing with these um, major drivers up front, when you know you're not going to be <laughs> competing with Vitam, it could be a little daunting, you know, racing with some of these other guys. But, 
you know you gotta kind of pick your goals and and, and take the uh, take what you can out of each situation so I think they do a great job of that a lot of them have, have been racing multiple seasons and uh, they continue to improve and the only way to improve is on a grid with really quick drivers so uh, they're getting challenged and uh, you know they're putting good races together on a, on a strong grid they should be proud of that um, so that's 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 really good um, oh I was gonna say one final thing oh main Wayne he's my final little circle um, I was really impressed with the, the race he did at Canada last season you know he was a golden reserve reserving for the platinum race qualified on the front row in platinum uh, he was so close so close to getting pole position um, he had a good race I mean he led led up front he was in that main group and I was impressed you know at that time he was putting in a lot of work and he moved up and he you know as a golden reserve he proved himself that he belonged and although he didn't win the championship last season in golden he won a lot of races he was runner-up lots of podiums he improved a lot and he said he wants to be up in platinum he wants he wants this so I said yeah go for it and I think him teaming up with Meb I hope they practice and talk to each other um, and I hope all teammates talk to each other and practice with each other because I think that's how it should be but I think main Wayne is um, he's gonna be the real deal I think he's gonna be kind of what TJ was when he moved up and he had his first season uh, in season 14 you know he made some noise he didn't quite get that win although he was so close I think Maine Wayne's gonna have a similar season I think he's gonna be up front he might even grab a first win if not I think he'll be close maybe not every race maybe the ones he prepares and really likes the most but um, I'm wishing him all the best for a great season, as is everyone else. Um, I know we rambled on a lot. I don't know how long we've been going for. Let me see. Hour and 20. Okay, not bad. Um, so, yeah. That's all I have on the Platinum class. Uh, any final thoughts, Camden, for on your end? I think we kind of summed it up pretty good. Uh, B-Tom is going to be quick. Odom's going to be quick. A lot of familiar faces, and, you know, as we're closing up the Platinum class, I think it's a good idea to at least just kind of run down the schedule, just pinpoint certain things. Uh, I don't know if you want to kick things off and just kind of run down and see, like, what stands out to you on the schedule at all. Yeah, well, I think, I think the first round stands out right away. I mean, I think that's going to be... Um, a difficult race for a lot because it's a new it's a new track a new layout um, quite difficult track too on especially time penalties high speed hard to overtake somewhat I think you'll have a lot of DRS trains but it's just something that is so new it's still new uh, new track new uh, season first round that's one to circle the first week um, because everyone will be putting in as much practice this week from round one round one onward the practice by everybody will go down everybody will be prepared prepared for the first round and then after that the practice will go down so you're gonna see everyone's f almost best round one and some people will stop practicing and then a lot more people will continue to get better because they continue to, to practice and put in some good times so Qatar is one I circle um, obviously I guess you have to circle Las Vegas down at round 14 uh, the other new track um, but we'll have a lot of time to get uh, for that one uh, the other one is Singapore actually uh, I don't know when we'll be getting that update I think we might get it by then. I'm looking at it October, you know, 24, 5, 6. So, uh, not that it is going to be a difficult track layout difference. If anything, it'll be a lot easier because it's just going to have a straight 
for those that don't know that'll be updated uh, they're having renovations to the track um, but that might just spice how that race plays out and then apart from those three you just have to look at the others you know the three tire special at Netherlands the sprint weeks at Austria and Australia uh, extra points up for grabs for those two sprint weeks the 100% finale if we do have a championship that goes uh, down to the end for platinum that's only for platinum we have a 100% race a full distance to figure that one out uh, so that would be ideal if uh, <laughs> if maybe uh, Odoms and and, pro and professional or or ta you know B Tom and if they could go to the end and, and finish it out at Brazil 100%, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be badass, to be honest with you. Um, and then uh, and the final one is, you know, obviously the TCR Grand Prix. It'll be our ninth seasonal event. Uh, so that's the big race, the one you want to win. Last season it was silent. This season we'll see who it is. So uh, obviously some more points up for grabs there. And that's the other thing to point out is these extra formats, extra points up for grabs. Um, you know, you have to do well in those, including the feature race, which is the 50%. So, other than that, it's pretty good. You have that one mid mid-season break. It'll be uh, pretty rough on the drivers, starting in August, ending one week, I guess, before Thanksgiving. So that's a lot of time uh, to be league racing for. Um, but all in all, I like the schedule, and um, yeah. It'll be 15 rounds to decide all three classes I'm excited for. It starts this week, uh, so don't forget to tune in. Uh, we are streaming live on YouTube and Twitch, 8.45 p.m. Eastern Time, and that'll be Tuesday for the Silver Class. Golden Class is on Wednesday, and the Platinum Class is on Thursday. Uh, you could check the... Um, website for more information and uh, to sign up join our discord follow tcr on all socials and um yeah i think that'll do it for this one here uh thanks camden uh, and as we are back with the podcast episode series and until next week thank you for listening